These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. I was thumbing from Central Florida With just the clothes on my back When old Danny White, he stopped beside me In his big orange Cadillac He was dressed like 1998 His pants were orange and his shirt was white He said, it's a long walk to Knoxville Would you like to ride? I sat down in the front seat He turned on the radio I heard Rocky Top playing on that old country station And I knew we had to go Then I noticed old Danny was driving too fast When he gave me some advice And I knew there was something special About this ride And he said, Josh, how can you coach this team in Tennessee? Have you paid your dues? Cause I'm telling you, you're in the great big orange country. He said, I'm gonna take this team straight to the top. Cause I'm big orange bound, and this is where my journey stops. And he turned that car around He said, this is where you get off, son Don't ever go to Alabama As I stepped out of that big orange Cadillac I said, Danny, many things I'll win us a national championship You can take that to the bank Josh, how can you coach this team in Tennessee? Have you paid? What up, what up, what up, everybody? Welcome to yet another installment of the Little Tangerine Show. Uh, I believe we're actually, we are we might be up around 60 now as far as total episodes. Oh, yeah. uh, welcome, welcome. I am your host, Big Drewski, here uh, mostly always with my co-host, Casper the co-host. Or actually now you're technically Casper the host. You are... Uh. We're fifty feet. That's official. Hey, listen, I'm the co-host intern on this thing. Okay, don't be you don't are, be giving me titles too complicated. You are technically the intern, but my fifty fifty partner in crime, son. He knows how to bring the tanginess out of the tangerines. I like to get a full grasp on two tangerines at once. Uh, I just feel like the the juice is is extra tangy. But uh, yeah, uh, so if you guys didn't notice. Started the show different, started with a just awesome, awesome freaking song. Um, uh, I guess, would would you call that a parody, I guess? What's the official No, term? no, it's like a, 
I, parody is fine, I guess. It's not really a parody because I'm making fun of it. It's because that's a legit song that it goes yeah, straight no, to my heart. That song is a banger, but yeah. So, yeah. uh, shout out to 5021 Ocean, um, on TikTok. That's a buddy of mine. We become bit pen pals or whatever. You're on TikTok. Amazing. Uh, yeah, he, he actually is really freaking. I mean, a lot of the funny borderline vulgar videos that I send other people, I get from him. Um, but yeah, he just, I, it, I love it because I don't use TikTok as often anymore, but when I do log in, I'm greeted with just hilarious videos and I scroll down through there and watch them all. But he actually is the one that sent me that song. That song is by Tony Paul. Look him up. Um, you know, we queued the video up at the beginning of this. The song is just freaking awesome for Tennessee fans, country fans in general or whatever. I just, it gave me chills. I mean, it truly, yeah. I mean, just freaking awesome song. So uh, me and Casper both were bumping to it. Uh, but yeah, definitely check him out. Um, to those of you that's listening to the podcast, I'm going to put a link at the bottom of the episode to where you can check it out yourself. Again, the video is on TikTok. I don't know if he's got it out anywhere else yet. Hopefully he does. Um, and then, yeah, to the, wherever you're watching this, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, whatever, doesn't matter. We're going to put that out. That way you guys can get access to it. And let's just wear that freaking thing out. I mean, we're, what, 16 days away oh. as of right now? Um, Close, baby. As of when we're recording this, if I don't know when the episode will drop. But, <laughs> yeah, as oh, of right okay. now, we're 16 days away. So, pretty pumped. Um, but, yeah, so this has just been a absolutely insane week for both me and Casper. Um, we got to interview Jonathan Wade, which we're going to get to in a minute. Coach Wade, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, but, you know, apparently we don't talk about it a lot in our personal lives that we do this show and we hop on the lives and do all this stuff. Um, but people found out and I don't know about, well, no, actually I do know for on Casper's sake, but, we have just been absolutely hounded the past week and everybody's like, dude, what? I, like, and it's funny because like, it's not exactly anything new, but it's just weird when people that you know or have known for a while walk up to you. And to be honest with you, it makes me feel weird because they treat me different and I don't, I don't like that, but uh, it's been a weird, wild ride. Yeah. I mean, but can I tell a funny story? So you think they're weird to you. They come up to me and they're like, whoa. Like, so, so does he like, like is this, is this real? What? <laughs> this is the 60th episode. Like, where you been? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, but, uh, I always find that kind of funny. The weird. Yeah. I mean, the weirdest thing to me, well, it is always funny when people come up to us. And they're like, bro, when you going to do another episode? And we're like, bro, we done did three. What are you talking about? Yeah, you know who you are. And that just means you're not subscribed. Hit the button, Papa. Hit the button. Hit the button, Papa. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I. So, yes. I, so, that is one thing. I'm glad you brought that up. That I have noticed. It's interesting because the views are a lot higher than the subscribers it's funny you guys are listening to this constantly but you haven't subscribed so first off just know if you subscribe to the podcast or you subscribe to the socials whatever by the way we've got a new little tangerine show facebook page because again up until recently it's kind of been all me um and and we're trying to transition over so the big drewski page Although I love all 24,400 and something of you guys, uh, we started a page directly for the Little Tangerine Show. So make sure you follow that because there's exclusive stuff on there. But um, yeah, you guys are, you know, the main thing that the reason why you want to subscribe is you're going to get a notification when we do a new episode. That way you don't have to walk up to us and ask when we're going to do a new episode. Casper's not going to show up at your door with some azaleas from, you know, the neighbor's house. We're not going to like start spamming your email with weird cat memes or nothing. Literally it's just, you're going to get a notification when we do an episode and it's, you guys are listening anyways. So that helps us out. Also leave a review. Even if we suck, even yeah. if you don't like us, actually if we suck, tell us what we did wrong. Yes, because we will 
vocally berate you on the next episode. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, we might. On that. We do have a dumbass comment of the week, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but no, I mean, like, yeah, just we just honestly, we we have no clue what we're doing. Um, this was really just an excuse for us to tell our wives that we're going to watch more college football. <laughs> that's right. Hey, man. That, hey, when, I started, man, brother. when I started this, everybody basically just was telling me like, dude, yeah, you need to do your own and stuff. But like, really, it's just an excuse to like, you know, watch more football. And um, it just, when you have a nice pretty page, your wives don't bother you as much. And that's truly the root of this. So we don't have a clue what we're doing. So tell us. Um, we, we welcome it with <laughs> semi open arms with arms wide open. Okay. That's it. My oh, well, you keep that Good off enough. the ear. I'll leave now real quick. Also speaking of people that uh, hit us up, I do want to give a shout out to Ned, um, Ned. Which, Ned, you know who you are. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to like, you know. And by the way, he probably has no clue that I'm doing this, but uh, you know who you are. I'm not going to blast you on the internet, but Ed, or Ed, Ned hooked me up with a trendsetter grooming kit from Wild Willies, which I'm a huge Duck Dynasty fan anyways. Um, you know, Willie is kind of one of my heroes as far as his entrepreneurial endeavors. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got a um, beard comb that is wet or dry. Um, and then it's also got some beard shampoo, some beard soft. And then I can't a hundred percent see what that says, but I think it says, it looks like it says beard moist. Um, oh wait, beard boost serum. Ooh, I'm going to boost my beard. So Ooh, baby, I meant, I meant to take a picture and post this, but to be honest with you, I just haven't had time. So I'm being lazy right now. I'm holding it up, but I'm going to try this out. Let you guys know how it is. Um, feel free to send us free crap because you know, why not? Especially right? if it's for grilling. Thank Especially, you. This guy right here. Yes. Casper will definitely try out the grilling stuff that you send. Um, and also I will just take anything for free because I'm kind of a whore for free stuff. So that's how it works. Um, so getting back into again, last week, I, I don't even know how to cue this up really, but we got to interview Jonathan Wade, former Vol for Life um ball alumni um now known as coach wade and it was it was freaking awesome like i don't like i said i don't know how to cue this up i, I it that. was just awesome i'm gonna interview you now oh you're gonna interview oh. me now okay I'm i ready. really want to know how this was for you and i think everybody on here that's a uh, long time supporters of you want to know so did you expect him to be that awesome like, did you? Let me pre- Let me start by saying I've gotten to know him pretty decently well over the last year, year and a half. And I already knew that he was awesome just by talking to him, following him on the socials. I, so I already knew he was awesome. And I still, in a million years, would not have thought that he would be that much more awesomer. Um, yeah. you know, and I, I'm, I don't know if that's a word, but I'm gonna make it one. I mean, he was the gooderest, you know, person that we could ever interview, but no, I, I in a million years, I did not think it was going to go like that. Yeah. I know you surely as heck didn't think it was going to go like that, but no, yeah. I, in a million years would have never expected it to go the way that it went. Yeah. So I, uh, I mean, he was just so down to earth. Just, I mean, dude, it's just like hanging out like normal stuff, man. I, uh, you know, he had so much to say. I was just sitting here like, man, this guy's good. Um, I thought it was crazy when he was talking about his coaching. That was my biggest thing. And just like the passion that he has for the kids and, um, you know, the whole part about he's just doing it to be the person that he didn't have, um, went a long way. And then like throughout the entire interview, I felt like he basically showed that that's the real him. That's not just something he says. He, he means that he lives that. And, um, so that's something I really respected. And I thought, no, that was, I mean, so a hundred percent authentic. I mean, the passion that he has for training. And like you said, you know, he, he basically said that, you know, he wanted, he started that because he wanted to be the coach that he never got and uh, his passion for it. But like, 
passion's one thing, but his knowledge was like incredible. Like for those of you that's not listened to that episode, I know it's two and a half hours long. First off, my apologies. I probably should have broke that up into 30 minute segments. Um, but as I was editing it, I was like, dude, there's, I don't know. There's nothing really to cut out. Like I don't, I don't know what to cut out because it was all just so good. But, uh, but yeah, no, he, uh, he dropped some major knowledge. I, and I'm not just saying this because he was on the podcast. Um, to be honest with you, dude, I, you know, uh, this may sound cliche, but I really honestly couldn't give a damn about, you know, I don't care if my page hits 10 million views. I don't care if it hits, you know, what's well, already hit 10,000, but I don't care if it hits that, you know, I'm not doing this for fame and fortune or anything like that. Uh, neither of us are. We just, like I said, thoroughly enjoy college football and want an excuse to watch more of it. But like, you know, I'm not just saying this to try to boost plays or anything like that. But honestly, anybody and everybody, any kid that is playing middle school or high school football, or to be honest with you, even college football needs to listen, if nothing else to like the first hour of that episode, because the knowledge that he dropped was, I mean, incredible. And in my opinion, like, I don't know. I don't even know that what that would be worth to me. Like you can't put a price tag on the stuff that he talked yeah. about. So, and a lot of stuff he says, not just football, man, everybody can apply a lot of his principles to life as far as studying, um, doing what you do, how you time. do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, big, big, you know, and then what, what the other, my other favorite was when he he's like, when you shoot for the moon, you're going to land on the stars. I was like, mm. Dang it, that should be on a koozie. Yep. <laughs> yep. But yeah, we'll no, I mean <laughs> Yeah. Uh yeah, we'd have to give him a cut of that. Although oh, he, yeah, does, sure. he does say my branding and marketing advice, you know, he owes me for. But uh but no, I mean just super cool dude. I you know, I mean we talked about LeBron versus MJ, we talked about NASCAR, talked about grilling, talked about high school football, NFL, the glory days. You know, he told a story about where he had an unfortunate bowel movement. I mean, he, you know, uh, talked, told some great stories about Philip Fulmer, some former player. I mean, we covered so much ground, and it's funny because every, I mean, I don't know about you, but everybody has been blowing me up, asking me questions about it, which yeah. I'm always like, dude, just go listen to the episode. But, yeah. uh, and he was so I, gracious with his time, too, man. Like, Super awesome, just guy the whole way through, and everything he said was good. Like there, none of it was. I mean, he was a hundred percent all the time. What was funny about it too was like, so I asked him beforehand, like, "Hey, dude, where you at on time?" He's like, "Bro, I'm here. Like, you got me. Like, let's roll." I was like, "Oh yeah." So like, we every episode we do a pre-game, pre-stream, whatever you want to call it where me and Casper get on here and go over notes and whatever. And so we told him like, Hey man, if you want to hop on a couple minutes early, we'll catch you up. And dude, he just hopped on and started rolling out stories. I was like, Oh wait, oh, let me hit record. Let me hit record. <laughs> like yeah. we'll use this. Something. But like, I mean, he was just ready to go, dude. And I mean, he's like, you said, so gracious with his time. And I mean, he's, he doesn't have much free time. Um, especially if you follow him on social media, you'll see yeah, that. Dude. But like, you know, never in a million years would I have expected him to just hop on here. And just, I mean, like I thought, yeah, you know, I mean, former NFL player, like you never know. I thought maybe he'd hop on here and be like, Mr. Cool, you know, a, you know, like kind of laid back. And I thought maybe I'd get 10 questions in and warm him up. But I mean, he was like ready to rip off right from the get go. Cause he's a real uh, dude, man. Real dude. Yeah. But I mean, it, like I said, dude, you know, never would we have expected it to go like that, but it was just an awesome episode. If you're a Tennessee Vols fan, especially go back and listen. I know I've got a lot of followers and listeners and stuff that are not necessarily Vols fans, but if you like college football in general, just go back and listen. I know it's two and a half hours, but every bit of it was gold, man. Um, did you, what was your, did you have a favorite part? Like, dude, what was your my favorite part, part was one, just kind of learning. Um, obviously not having kids uh, like learning about FBU and all this middle school football and all this stuff. And like, um, we talked just, about it for 
yeah. almost an hour, but honest to God, we could have done a three hour episode just yeah. on him talking. We could have just about- talked about Coach Wade never even touched Tennessee, froze nothing, and he would have kept going because like he is just as passionate about that as he ever was about playing. And that um it really comes through um and it affects everything he does. And uh I, I thought that was awesome. So um really for me enjoyed it. For me being a Tennessee fan, which I mean What's funny is, dude, there's so many questions I didn't even get to. And I've told Casper about this. I never even told Coach Wade about this. But right here in the corner of this picture, if you can see that, there is a picture um, of the Tennessee track and field team from, like, I don't remember what year. But I, I was, a little, I was like, in middle school. I thought I was going to be slick. And so I, he, like, sent a little – or I wrote a letter into the track and field team. I was like, hey <laughs> – Really interested in y'all's team, man. If y'all, I would just be thrilled if you could, like, you know, give me an autograph for my favorite guys. And it was like, there's like three or four football players. Um, I, like I said, I thought I was slicker than who I was. But the funny part about it is Jonathan Wade actually signed that track and field picture. And I've got some old rookie cards and stuff in my collection and stuff from when he played. So it's just amazing how people's paths cross and you know never in a million years would i've thought that i'd be doing this today but uh you know it's just funny like i said how people's paths cross and just chance meeting you know we we, me and him started chit chatting or whatever and then we had a lot in common you know he's a louisiana boy you know so we got a lot in common with just because i mean i'm southern as well but you know he's entrepreneurial thinking and stuff my favorite part though is like a tennessee fan besides just the, the memory down or running down the memory lane and nostalgic Tennessee parts. But uh, my favorite part was when he talked about running to the tee for the first time, dude. I mean, the whole time he was talking, yeah. I just, I felt like chills run up my body and I yeah. thought it was going to knock my hat off, but I had my headset on. Um, but man, when he talks about running through the teeth for the first time, and I'm not even going to take away from his story, you just need to go back and listen to it. For the record, if you go back and listen, if you go to the description, there's timestamps, so you can skip ahead to or backwards, forwards, whatever to whatever part you want. But man, that that part of running through the T was incredible. But uh, if for some ch- you know reason you don't get to listen to the whole episode, we're going to be releasing snippets for probably like the next four years on the little tangerine show. Page. Yeah. Cause I mean, dude, we got, I mean, we got so much, so much good stuff, but that was kind of my favorite part. Yeah. So, yeah. I like that too. But um, I mean, everything was just so good, man. Like even the part talking about, the crazy thing too for me obviously like you, you we've talked about it here before i moved here um around that time but i was in a different part of the state and didn't really care so much but um talking about t- tennessee football being number two and i live in Knox, i'm like but yeah. i mean it makes sense you know going back thinking about it but um that's just wild to me yeah. talking about the lady balls and on all that and Shout uh, out to Garrett. I mean, you know how who you are, but he basically said the same thing. He was from Virginia or West Virginia or somewhere where um, they're not good at football. Um, <laughs> just, kidding. <thanks. laughs> just kidding. Actually, my West Virginia peeps, I them's my people, dude. Anytime I go <laughs> fair, we're we're good. We're good. But uh, they're really no. good at losing big games. Well, they're really good at. at Really good at drinking beer, but that's besides the hey, point. Amen. Um, but uh, no, I like that. me and me and Virginia peeps. Uh, well, me and West Virginia peeps are good. Virginia, y'all can do whatever you do. But uh, that's ACC trash. No, he said he come from over here. He lived around Bristol. You know, net football. You know, never was a thing. Whatever. And then he moved to uh, I forgot where he said he moved to, but either way, he said you know he it wasn't that big of a thing. Didn't really think much about it. And then he moved inward into Tennessee and just fully understood that like, and I, like I was explaining to him, dude, from Memphis to like, you know, Bristol, it's just all orange. It's all, you know, and Tennessee is one of those States like Nebraska, you know, um, and States like that where, you know, we got one team. I mean, unless you like root for Vanderbilt or MTSU or whatever, we got one team. It's not like Florida where you got Miami, Florida state, you know, the Gators, UCF, you know, what, you know, we don't have multiple 
even Oklahoma, you got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. There's no split. For Tennessee, it's just orange. And so the pageantry is real, man. And it's just hard to not fall in love with, especially like if you don't have like a hardcore. T- I know you're like Tar Heels when it comes to basketball, but, you know, being from North yeah. Carolina, but like, yeah. you know, it's just, it's hard to not fall in love with, dude. But, uh, yeah. But yeah. I mean, we did a great job painting that picture too, man. He just he did a fantastic job. I mean, Everything that we want Tennessee to be, you know. He showed us the tattoo. He's got the yes. power T tatted yes. on his arm. Yes. And he thought we sure. couldn't see it, but we could. It was beaming like a challenged light. all you players. If you say you're not here for the bag, get the damn tattoo. That's what I'm saying. Get oh, the man. tattoo. Now we need to get the tattoo. What do you think? <sighs> <Hey. Oof. laughs> <laughs> we'll talk but, about uh, it. I'm not committing to nothing tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> but uh yeah, so now we do have some future interviews lined up if you guys like that one. Um I've got verbal commitments, but I'm not gonna f- I'm not gonna fully go full bore with announcing and promoting and stuff until I get a hundred like a date set, t- date and time or whatever. But we got some interviews lined up, man. Um now we do have Kevin Bozeman, comedian Kevin Bozeman from Chicago, who is 100% in. He basically said, just set me the date. But for those of you that don't know who he is, he's just freaking hilarious, dude. But he's a, he's a, he really likes sports betting, but he's going to come on at some point and uh, hang out with us or whatever. That I can't wait for that one because it's going to be, I don't, I have no clue where that one's going to go, but it's just going to be fun. But uh, yeah, we got all kinds of, do what? I said, I'm pretty excited for that too. Just knowing what you told me about him, I'm pretty pumped for that one. So yeah, I mean, just absolutely gonna laugh hilarious. My butt off, so, but yeah, we got uh, like I said, we got some interviews coming up. Uh, you know, I I would, I mean, I'm cool with having Coach Wade back on, but yeah, we got some stuff lined up. Um, don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I've kind of soft announced it before now, but um, but yeah, so we'll kind of get into that later. But we're gonna take our first break. And then when we come back, we're going to get into the top 25 rankings that were released. We're going to go, you know, through the top, you know, the top 10 for sure. And then we might brush over the rest of it. We're going to talk about Tennessee's ranking, how we feel about it. Because obviously that's our our team. Talk about some surprises, you know, all kinds of stuff. So uh, we're just going to give you guys a rundown. So uh, stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Little Tangerine Show. Oh, yeah. With just the clothes on my back. When old Danny White, he stopped beside me. These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home, and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, Doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. In his big orange Cadillac He was dressed like 1998 His pants were orange and his shirt was white He said it's a long one All right, baby, welcome welcome back to the Little Tangerine Show, baby I'm your host, Big Drewski And I've also got my co-host, Casper the co-host Welcome, welcome back What up, what up, what up Oh, dude, there's nothing like sitting down talking about football Um, especially Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. You, I'm ready. Do you, I'm ready. I'm do you ready. Do you lock your wife in the closet, or do you let her walk around in the bedroom? Or cause mine's laying down on the bed, but I mean, you know, I just tell her like, "Go away." <laughs> like during football season, or I just when we do the podcast. I mean, yeah, I do lock her in the closet. I'm not leaving my bed. I mean, I mean, like you know, just when we do the podcast. <laughs> no, during football season, I'm so pumped because I'm I'm right now. I've got three screens not include my ipad but i'm working on a fourth and i'm it's it's gonna oh, be yeah. awesome so getting into 
the top 25 ranking. Now, we are going to do the AP ranking because that's the official. Although the coaches had Tennessee at 10th, we're not going to get into that. Um, I like coaches. So, first off, so we don't call it the Little Tangerine Show for nothing. Obviously, we're college fans. We are, I mean, Tennessee fans. Um, you know, that is our team. So, um, real quick, um, I think me and Casper are on the same page, but how do you feel about the, the 12th ranking? Uh, I love it. I actually, I really do. And it's because we're not in the top 10. So pressure's off, honestly, from a national stage right now. Last year, we didn't have a high ranking to start. Didn't matter. Came in, did our thing. I'm good to sit at 12th until November, honestly. I, I'd, I'd rather us stay in 12th than just keep winning and nobody talk about it. I so, am. Is that, you know what I'm saying? I 100% but, agree. I think there's a lot of people that's upsetty spaghetti about us getting 12th because LSU and Alabama is ahead of us. Well, that's bull crap because Clemson's ahead of us and we beat. Listen, Joe Milton has the freaking world watching him right now the the nation is watching the vols everybody's ready to see us get knocked <laughs> off we seen what happened yep. when we got that numero uno ranking which for the record i never claimed um i didn't i didn't claim that ranking just because <laughs> I, was I knew it was it was kind of bull georgia okay georgia fans this is recorded okay i said it from the beginning Georgia deserved to be first. I don't know why they put them third. I don't know why they put us first. I think they put them third and us first. So when they beat us, then it would catapult them and knock us back because we, you know, but yeah. um, they deserve to be first. I don't know why they put them third, neither here nor there. Kirk Herbstreet must have sent some late night emails or something. I, I really don't know. It's because it's because of our offense, but I mean, like I know why they did it, but I agree with your assessment of the situation that we never should have been ahead of Georgia yeah. last year. And, Not till we beat them. We came in way too low to start the year. Why would we jump in? Yeah, if it we didn't it beat made them? no I mean, sense right? other than statistically, I think they wanted us to be first so that we would lose to the third ranked team and then knock us out. But that's neither here nor there. That's yeah. last year. But I mean, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people are upset, that, but I think it's perfect. Let Clemson go in and yeah. grill some burgers before the games. Let them mess some stuff up. LSU and Florida State's ahead of us. They got to play each other again. Somebody's going to have to lose. Um, yeah. You know, <sighs> Georgia's got a pretty easy schedule. They they adopted the Ohio State method, but they kind of deserved it after having back to back natties. Um. Bama, who knows if they put turnover Milrow in, then you know who knows what's going to happen with them. But uh, me personally, I, I loved the twelfth ranking. I think there's the teams that are ahead of us are kind of yeah. wishy washy at best. So again, if we come in low pressure, perform well, I think that that's going to be perfect. If oh. we would have started off like eighth or seventh or higher, I would have been nervous. So I, I think it's perfect as far as what's best for us. Maybe not so much as a fan, but like what's best for us, I I couldn't love it anymore. Like bring it. Yeah. Well, and not to be Eeyore, but the reality of the situation is Milton's still not proven. Milton is still not proven. I mean, hey, he did great. Clemson, hey, we won the orange orange bowls. We don't lose in Florida, baby. I mean, but like I said, he yes. we're still worried. There the, the, I think the biggest thing is what ESPN posted on Instagram the other day. Number one most important player in all of college football is Joe Milton. Am I, I mean, is, that's fair. Me and you both that, agree. That, that, is, that, that is fair. And, I, again, I'm saying this from an unbiased opinion or trying to be unbiased, but the reason why he is considered the most important, I think it, it the official thing said the most important player in regards to the playoff, playoff. race Yes, is yes. because – if he finally plays up to his potential this year, he's going to be incredible. If he plays yeah. to what we've seen in the past, then it, not so much. Um, so basically what they are saying is 
he looks like he's improved. We don't know yet. If he continues doing what he's doing, he's going to be lights out incredible, right? So, and they're basically saying that he's the most important to the playoff race because if he does what we think he might be able to do, then they're saying we're going to make the playoffs, which means top four. So, you know, that it's high praise, uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, I would agree with that just because, but like you said, he's unproven. Nobody really knows what he's going to do. That's kind of what dropped us. Um, although to be fair with Clemson, they got, um, you know, the, was it club Nick or whatever his name is? I can't remember. Um, but they had the guy that come in that, you know, bench you go i can't ever pronounce his name but yeah. they benched the uh, dj and uh he came in and he played great in the orange bowl um they just you know should have recruited a kicker but uh that's <laughs> there. so um so getting into these these top 25 just before we even go down the list or whatever i mean is there any in these that just pop out to you that just like you why know? or like that's, well just that's good for them general, or what? I mean, there's a couple. Yeah, there's a there's a couple things. For one, I wonder why Alabama's fourth. Um, yet again, I I'm the only person on the train, and you, you might get to play this back at the end of the year. But I've I've said it. I, I just I think Saban is going. I sorry if he heard it. On the rest of the season, if he hears this, I'm sorry because I know what he's going to do if he hears me say that. But uh, he's going. Like that straight Depends down. Depends on if that beach house that he bought's for retirement or if that's just for, you know, pleasure, I guess. But you know. Yeah. I think <laughs> but, the plan is to win the natty and walk off this year. I think like I legitimately think in his, in his head right here, win the natty and walk off. I think that's his plan. But well, uh, to be fair, got it. Saban is gonna be out for blood. Yes. I just yes. don't know. I just don't know if Gilligan's got the supporting cast is the problem. Yeah. Um, I mean, traditionally I mean, they'll do it, but I just, ah, he bounces I mean, I back. He's a bounce back guy, but I just, I don't know, man. You, I don't know if I've seen, time, right? I don't know if I've seen if they're going with Milro or I think Ty Simpson, maybe is there. About haven't there, announced but, uh, it. They got three in the running. Haven't announced. So to me, we're up against the wall. And the fact that they nobody's they're either playing some gamesmanship or nobody's really nobody's really came out or whatever. But to me, at this point, it's a distraction. Like you should have pretty well your starters locked in by now. But honestly, I think they're they want Bama in the playoffs, so they're giving them that fourth spot. And to be honest with you, I think the way they said it, this I think they said it that way to basically say it's your spot to lose. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're basically saying, "Hey, yeah. you wanted it. Here it is. It's your spot to lose." And you know, in all got- fairness, to Bama, since I just dumped all over them. In all fairness, they lost yeah, to you- us at home by field goal. Yeah, they they I mean, lost LSU at LSU by what a field goal. I mean, but also to be fair, now we're making you know what a crap sandwich is, where it's yeah. like you know you, you got the crap. Something mm-hmm. nice, and then the crap. Um, yeah. To be fair, though, so there's a lot of Bama fans that were highly upset last year, and then, by God, them tears were so salty and delicious. But <laughs> I do just love salty caramel. To play devil's le- uh, devil's list, to play devil's <laughs> advocate here, <laughs> to play devil's advocate here, uh, they lost a couple close ones. But they did also win a couple close ones. They were this close to win losing four last year. Yeah. You know, Mul- I mean, Texas, yeah. Yeah. if Mullet Man plays the whole game, who knows yeah. what goes there? Texas AM, you know, they like to talk about the questionable quote unquote officiating against the balls. But I mean, look at the t- end of the Texas AM game. They were this close. Um, so yeah, I think. Like you said, I definitely think if Saban's going to retire, he's going to want to ride off in the sunset. But I think they set him at the number four spot just to say, hey, dude, it's your spot to lose. Um, that's that's my- fair. Saban's earned that over his career, honestly. I mean, yes, I would say that. To be yeah, fair, right. and again, Bama fans, this is recorded, so feel free to screen record this or whatever. Um, 
subject to copyright infringement. Um, but here's the deal. Coaching wise, right now, Saban's my goat. I mean, obviously I love Philip Former, love Dooley, you know, Lou Holtz is up there for me, Spurrier's up there. But as far as college coaching goes, besides Saban, I mean, who else is there? I mean, Bear Bryant, but Saban won at two schools. I don't know how Saban can hold his hands up walking around with that much jewelry. I mean, I it's got to be heavy. <laughs> I mean, it's just to me, it's just. But you know, Kirby's looking pretty good and everything. You know, I mean, I, you know, I, I think Spurrier rocks the visor better. But either way, it's here, neither here nor there. So we're gonna run through the twenty-five, not the whole twenty-five, but um, we're gonna run through this. So I'm well. I tell you what, I'm gonna list the twenty-five. Take notes if you want, and then we're going to back up and then just kind of go over it. But first is Georgia, second, Michigan, three, Ohio State, fourth, <laughs> yeah, no, fourth, Bama, fifth, LSU, six, USC, seventh is Penn State, eighth, Florida State, ninth, Clemson, tenth, Washington, huh? Lep, yeah, I know. Who? Uh, 11th is Texas, 12 is them balls, 13 is Notre Dame, 14 Utah, 15 is Oregon, 16 Kansas State, 17th TCU, uh, 18th is Oregon State, 19th is Wisconsin, 20 Oklahoma, 21st Carolina, uh, 22nd Kiffin and Ole Miss, 23rd, Texas A&M, 24th, Tulane, 25th, Iowa. And I'm going, I think I'm going to try, I'm just going to pull this up for the the video purposes here real quick. Um, Just so our peeps that's watching this can kind of look at what we're looking at here. But uh, yeah, let's see here. So I'm going to pull that up. Thank you. It really helps. Uh, yeah, just so the, the ones that's watching this on video. Now, again, uh, go to www.bigdreesky.com if you want to see what we're looking at. Um, but yeah, is that is there a better screen there? Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Okay. So, and we'll, we'll try, we're not going to go through it. We're going to focus on like the top 10 plus some notables, but Georgia pancake schedule. Again, that's I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. I just mean that in the standpoint of like it's just an easy schedule. We're debatably their hardest game. Um they should be coming in quick, and off still undefeated. No questions asked. They should, should be coming in. Now, obviously, they've got new quarterback at the helm, Stetson. He earned a lot of my respect last year. He's coming into NFL looking great as far as preseason. Um Give the man credit. Like he, you know, he, he won. So new quarterback at the helm, as far as everybody's concerned, Georgia has earned, you know, the two back-to-back natties, whatever. It's kind of their title to lose, but yeah, they should be coming in in Knoxville undefeated. Now I will say, I don't care if we've lost every game up to that game. Knoxville is going to be rocking. Um, if I think if we were going to beat Georgia, it would be this year. Um, but obviously Georgia's still a national contender, but they lost, you know, uh, Jalen, they lost Ringo, they lost Nolan Smith, lost Stetson. They lost a lot of key pieces, most of which went to the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> I mean, and but, probably could win the Super Bowl this year. I mean. Yeah, but it's worth noting, back-to-back natties, but their points is fifteen seventy two. Michigan's is fourteen ninety. Okay, so I personally think Michigan's got a good shot. Now, Michigan is my number two team because my my wife's grandfather's from Detroit, so I would love to see his team get one while he's still you know able to enjoy it. Um, but yeah, honestly, me personally, I th- I think you got to watch out for Michigan this year, dude. They got JJ McCarthy back. They got a lot of their key pieces back. They got embarrassed on the national stage. They also were very close, looked good on that last drive, and then pulled a Tennessee Vols and just said, you know what, let's just – you want to just take a crap right in the middle of the field? Okay, let's do that. That sounds good. Um, 
yeah, they've got a lot of key pieces coming back. I mean, J.J. McCarthy, 2,700 yards last year. Blake Corum, uh, I'm pretty sure he's coming back. Um, but uh, 1,463 yards, even if McCarthy goes down. Cade McNamara, you know, legitimate threat. Uh, I mean, they just know how to beat Ohio State, and I just feel like maybe they this might be their year as well. Uh, and also, it'd be incredibly awesome to see, you know, a team from 97 and 98 make it to the playoffs. You know, Michigan had their run in 97. Um, no offense, but screw you, Charles Woodson, you know, Peyton, whatever. But, you know, Michigan and seeing some of these blue bloods get back in there. But honestly, I feel pretty good about Michigan. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on, on you know, Georgia and Michigan, but, I mean – it's kind of Georgia's to lose. And like I said, I feel pretty dang good about Michigan unless they just absolutely screw the pooch. But yeah, no, I mean, I think Michigan's a playoff team first round out. So Ohio state, um, did your mic cut out for a second? You good? No, no, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Um, Ohio state. We don't need to talk about it. I mean, they're, so they're, what? They still haven't decided who's the next quarterback to be the biggest bust in the next draft. So uh, we don't even know who that's going to be. But pretty much, I mean, I you know, when you play internet schools, it's just I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what else you expect. I mean, Michigan's had their number. Um, they lost C.J. Stroud. Ryan Day is, you know, I mean. On paper, he looks good, but, you know, he, I Ryan Day to me, and again, I have a lot of respect for the man I'm about to talk about, but Ryan Day I think is kind of the next Mark Richt. Like, he wins games but just can't win the big ones. Like, and that's – I love Mark Rick, super nice guy, you know, like, I mean, type of dude that you can sit down and confide in and tell all your secrets to, but he just couldn't win the big game. You know, it's just nothing personal. Um, we've already talked about Bama. Uh, this Saban's going to be out for blood. Like I said, I just don't think he's got the correct. I just don't know if he's got, I mean, I know they've obviously they got a, more five stars than freaking a Gordon Ramsay restaurant, but I, I just, I, I really struggle N- with. I L <laughs> can't do it. I, he can't. I think the NIL is going to mess saving up. I really do. Sorry to cut you off. That, that'll be what retires him. Um, LSU, you know, um, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a brain fart. What's their name? Brian or Brian Kelly is the coach. Mm, I yeah. guess he found an accent. Kind of yeah. I guess he found a fake accent for a coach that wins ball games last year. I don't know. They wiggled their way in there. Jaden Daniels, you know, super experienced quarterback, um, good quarterback. I mean, they've got a good team. Um, honestly, I kind of like them better than Bama as far – I mean, may, they might wiggle on up there. I don't know, but they've got kind of a rough schedule this year. Yeah. Um, thoughts, you know, fairly really? quickly on LSU. Yeah, I mean, you got- fairly quick, quickly. The, the West is – so the West has always been pretty tough here lately in the SEC, right? Well, this year I think it's going to be tough because I don't think any of them are at the top. I, I think LSU, Bama, and my my old boy, Lane Kiffin, I think they're going to be all right at each other's necks, and uh, I don't really think one of them is going to separate themselves. So, so I'm going to hit you with a random question here that just crossed my mind, but do you think the SEC West – their time is done. Do you think that the SEC transfers back over to the East like it did back in the 90s and 2000s? So, first of all, this is the last year. Is it this year or next year is the last year of divisions? I think it's this year. Is it next year? Oklahoma next Texas? year. Yeah, 2024 or next year. Yeah, so this is it. So, uh, yeah, the, the West is over because they're not getting it this year. Sorry. I mean, you got Georgia. Tennessee's acting like they're going to do something. Um, you know, yeah. the Gators, maybe they fall off. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know, his for the last, 
Well, the SEC last... West beats itself up. That's, I mean, that's part of the problem for them, just being honest. That's going to be tough games like LSU. Yeah, uh, I like Brian Kelly and everything, actually. I actually like him. I don't know why. Even, the, even him and his – Even with his accidents. nonsense, I, I just like him as a coach. But um, I think he's pretty decent. But, like, I mean, Alabama, Ole Miss. I mean, I think, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I think that – Fear and nostalgia of like Nick Saban and you know Bam. I think that's finally kind of wore off a little bit. I think people are kind of just you know. I don't want to say that they're not intimidated because it is still Saban and Bama, but I think that mystique is kind of wore off a little bit, and now people starting to kind of look elsewhere. You know. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Um, I, I really another thing too. So all those. One quick thing, and this is again SEC West. All those schools out there, they've got nothing to offer. LSU might have something. I, I'm just saying. There's nothing else. If you go to LSU, hey, and nobody cares about championships. Like you go to Alabama. Have you ever been to Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Have you ever? Yeah, been it, there? it literally. I, there. They got a Whataburger. It, they got. I mean, honest to God, I just assume that they call their team the Crimson Tide because it smells like elephant doo doo. Like it yeah, just smells I mean, like, terrible, but there's nothing yeah. there. I, I mean, I think there's more like, churches in Tuscaloosa than there are teeth. Okay. And that doesn't <laughs> mean there's a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's yeah, Tuscaloosa Sorry. other than whatever Nick Saban's got going on. I mean, you know, but I used to have to go there every Tuesday for work for like three years, just for the record. I hated it. No, no wonder you're so grumpy. God. All right. Yeah. Moving down the list. USC. So obviously USC, they've got hookers, you know, back up. Um, you know, the the uh the consolation prize for the Heisman, because you know, if Hooker doesn't yeah. go down, he wins it. Yeah. Suck on that. Um Milton's but, got him this year though. Uh sorry, I shouldn't say things out loud. I'm being way too positive. Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna put some money down. Like, you know, let's not forget, you know, oh Casper, you know, he's got you know, you got we're Tennessee going, going 12 no, no. and 0, baby. Listen, when I picked, when I made our prediction without picking all the games live on here under pressure, I said nine and three. So just remember that. You did, but nine there is three. something about when you start going through those schedules, Listen, you know. Yeah, these people on the show, man, they want us to win. I want us to win. Do you see this color right here? Look, Coach Wade said it takes a certain kind to wear this color, and I'm wearing this color, damn it. Okay, you gotta have right. some tangerines to rock this orange. By God, that's what I'm talking about. So. Uh, Southern Hanging California, I think Southern California's got a shot. I mean, you know they've got they've got enough pieces there. Um, you know Caleb Williams. Uh, you know who knows what he's gonna do, but uh, they'll probably. I be mean, pretty solid. I feel comfortable. I mean, like I said, I think they're gonna hang around all year. I mean, Pac-12. You know, I, I call them the WAC 12 all the time as a joke. But, I mean, to be honest with you, there's some talent there, especially the quarterback position in Pac-12. Um, yeah, they just don't State, get hit. Sorry, what? They just don't get hit because there's a bunch of chickens on defense out there. So, Yeah. Um, you know, Penn State, I mean, I just – with Penn State, man, they're always – Great, but never elite. It seems like they just again it just can't ever seem to finish. Uh, which I can't remember. Is James Franklin still out there? I I can't I can't remember. Which I always liked James Franklin when he was at. Uh, I always liked James Franklin when he was at uh, Vanderbilt. But uh, you know, I just don't. I just don't know. Um, it. I think it shows. Um kind of look i'm sure you're looking it up too but um yeah it says he served sorry it says he served as uh if he's still there which i think he is yes he's still the current coach um james Fra- I, I do love james franklin but again so far he's not show the problem is and we talk about this all the time whether it's business or whatever the problem is can you finish? It's not the idea, it's the application. Butch Jones, great ideas, all this zest, all this zeal, 
wasn't a finisher. He could build it, but he couldn't finish. And, you know, it, when it comes time to put the roof on, that's kind of where the rubber re- meets the road. We're in the same spot with Hopple. Obviously, Kirby Smart came into a good situation, capitalized, but he finished. Say what you want about him, but he finished. How many other good coaches have come along, come into good spots, and not be able to finish? So, with Penn State, man, I just – I want to see them do good. I really do, but I just, they haven't shown me anything. Um, yeah. It's nothing against Penn State, man. They're just, I, they're not, they're not, mess, they, it, it's got to be the SEC, man. I don't, they just, I, yeah. The, I, hate, like, I hate to be that guy, but honestly, I think I mean, the, the, the stats, though, <laughs> like the biggest thing holding them back. These days, there are plenty of things to worry about but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, Doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today in my opinion is it's just, yeah, you look at the big 10 up to this point. Now, obviously there's some rigmarole going around some uh, yeah. round robins with the team swapping and stuff. Yeah. But I think the biggest problem with the Penn state is you got three good teams and then you got some other ones that's semi relevant. And then you've got basketball schools <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you know, that's one thing Coach Wade said, man. He's like, dude, when you come to the SEC, you're going to get it every single week. So I think that's one of the biggest things holding hold them back. But, um, you know, Florida State, they're going to play LSU again. Um, obviously, they opening weekend, right? do what? I th- that's opening weekend. Right? I think Atlanta it is. Or... Yeah, I think it is opening Ballard. weekend. Um, yeah. You know, Florida State, I mean – Again, kind of an old blue blood. They've had, you know, problems in the past and stuff. Um, you know, Travis threw for 3,200 yards last year. Benson, 990. Wilson, 897 yards. You know, they did some good stuff last year. Um, they they pretty much knocked LSU off the map for a little while, and then they slowly chipped back in. Um, you know, I like Florida State. I think they've got a lot of potential. I just it, it goes back to that that finishing thing, man. Um, you know, can they finish, dude? It's just I don't know. I mean, you know, they got Travis back. They got Benson back. Um, Travis is a senior. He's experienced. They got Benson. Benson did some good stuff last year. I mean, he's a junior. Um, who knows what he's going to do after this year? Um, you know, they've got some pieces and stuff there, but you know, I, I don't know if they're still going through that post Jimbo phase or what, but, um, <laughs> I think they've got a decent shot to maybe change some opinions and stuff about them. But to be honest with you, man, I think this whole, are they going to stay? Or are they going to go the, should I stay or should I go I, with the ACC and all that stuff? I feel like that's going to be a little bit of a distraction this year so. I don't know how comfortable I feel about them, but thoughts on Florida State? I hate them. <laughs> I, I, I will say we play them and we should beat them every year, and somehow we screw it up or they kick a ninety-seven yard field goal. It just—I uh, will say though, it's incredibly them. debatable. But Bobby Bowden might be on my Mount Rushmore coaches. I, I used to hate and love Bobby Bowden. Same thing with Steve Spurrier. But we've had that discussion before, and your arguments are pretty solid. So um, I hear you on that. So Clemson, in my opinion, mm, I got to think carefully here. But Clemson, 
I think is one of the most overrated teams maybe in like the last three years. Um, I know it sounds bad. Defense last year, especially was solid. They've got some good pieces. Maybe their new quarterbacks in the ball out, but I think Dabo kind of had his, 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 uh, what am I trying to say? He had his 15 minutes, but I kind of feel like they're sort of played out. I know that sounds bad, um, but I just, I don't know. Maybe. So that's fair. That's fair. Here's, let's talk about Dabo, though. You bring up an interesting point with Dabo. So we already talked about Saban, and his he's bought this house in, on an island or whatever. Mm-hmm. Dabo's supposed to be the man. I mean, he's from Pelham. What, for, for Bama? When I lived there, he was supposed to be. He's the chosen one. The when chosen one, play. the predecessor. You don't think old Kiffin with that slick back hair is going to come in there and, and be macking up on them 400-pound Tuscaloosa chicks? They out of the state of Alabama so fast. <laughs> I ain't going to buy that bullshit stuff. Um, <laughs> anyways, I, I, I think Dabo. Is Dabo that good? Now, have, one weird thing about their schedule is they have some pretty tough games. They're all at home, including against Drake May. They're at home, so Carolina will lose that game because they lose at Clemson. Period. It just it don't get me started. <laughs> but they've got Notre Dame. They've got Florida State. Um, the, and they're at home. Like honestly, man, all, as a balls fan, talking. as a balls fan and a hardcore, you know, SEC watcher growing up. It's, it sounds obnoxious to say, but like, I mean, he lost to two SEC teams last year, dude. Like, it, yeah. it's just, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It is obnoxious as somebody that understands from another perspective, but it, it it's just, it's factual at this point. Like, yeah, I mean, it, sorry. You know, uh, if he comes to Bama, though, I do think, I do think, I think he would do pretty good there. Um, there would be a learning curve. I don't know if he would be used to that much pressure because at Clemson, he kind of put him on the map. So it's kind of like, I think he could be there for a while, but uh, yeah, they got a hell of an entrance. I'll give them that. I just don't know that I feel comfortable about them going all the way. And I'm not saying that I think the Vols are going to go away all the way or anything. No. I'm just saying. Um, so Washington, they got uh, Michael Penix Jr., who obviously is an incredible athlete, probably going to be playing on Sundays at some point. Um, but, you know, so last year uh, he went for 4,641 yards, 31 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Okay, just absolutely balled out. Um, obviously having a piece like that, is an incredible asset. And they also had, um, Odunes. Uh, I don't know if I pronounce that right. Odunes, Odunzi, uh, <laughs> either way. Um, he went for 1100, uh, yards last year. Um, obviously they're doing some good stuff being in pack 12. If they can make a little bit of noise, I think that they'll have a pretty good shot at doing something towards the end, but I just don't see them getting past USC. You know, you also got Bo Nix down there, Oregon, which they got embarrassed by Georgia, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not saying that I think that they're going to do bad. I'm just saying I don't know that they're going to be able to surpass the other teams. They've got Odunzi back. Or Dunes. I'm probably butchering his name. I apologize if you're listening. Yeah, but Jack Wagner. Michael Penix Jr., incredibly incredible athlete. Really great at the quarterback position. I just don't know that I can put them above USC or maybe even Oregon. I know Oregon's a little bit further down, but I just like Oregon better. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't. I, what did I tell you when we pulled this up and looked at it? I mean, I, I can't. Washington's not finishing the top ten. Sorry. I just, I just have a hard time believing it. Um, I just have a hard time believing it. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's what I got. My whole screen went black, so I, I freaked Ooh. out. There for a Texas. I, I actually, I actually really like Texas, man. I mean, 
The only thing that I, I have a maybe possible issue with, I think they're going to go with Mullet Man, so they may have a arch the year versus... Mullet is over. He needs to cut that shit off. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you right now, man, I think if he played all the all the way through that Bama game, I think they win. But I think Arch is going to be a distraction. And if he starts, I'll be watching a lot of the games. Um, but, you know, just being a Peyton fan. But I think Texas has a lot of great pieces. But the whole, this is last year before the SEC thing, Arch versus Mullet, man, there's too many tabloids there for me to think that they're going to be able to focus on football i feel like this year's going to be your distraction i think they're going to have a good year not a great year and i think they're going to maybe slightly underperform i think they'll finish in the top 25 but i just have a hard time believing with all these distractions that they're going to like just go on into the next level um yeah i mean thoughts on tech i mean they're losing the band, all right. week two i mean you said they're losing uh, the they got Bama again. Bama's going to beat them. So, um, yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. I, I'm curious to see. I mean, hey, I'd love to see what Arch has got. I, I really would. I, my yeah, Arch is going to have as long of a career at Texas as he wants if he doesn't go to the NFL. Like, he could maybe go to the NFL as a backup. I don't know. But, um, obviously, next one on the list is Tennessee. Um I've made it well known that I trust Milton. Uh, my biggest questions is, can they replace Hyatt's output? I think they can. Um, Thornton, incredibly athletic. He's going to be lots out, I think. Um, we got Ramel Keaton back, so we got a little bit of um, reinforcement there. We've got Brew, who is underrated. Our running game is underrated. I think they have enough weapons. My only thing is, we're going to really see – how much of a difference the offensive coordinator makes. Because, I mean, obviously, um, Heupel brought his staff with him from USC. Uh, he's known for being lots out on offense, obviously. Um, I felt like we've done a pretty good job of um, recruiting and stuff on defense. Um, got a lot of young guys in there, but still, I think we got a lot of potential. Um, but in my mind, I just really – I want to see – how the offensive coordinator does and how he blends in. Um, I think if we can run the offense like we've seen in the past, Tennessee's got a good shot, man. And like I said, sitting at that 12 spot, they're kind of in the perfect spot. It's going to depend on Milton's play, but uh, it's going to kind of depend on the defense. But, I mean, I really genuinely think that they have a good shot to slide up, especially looking at some of the teams that's ahead of them. And to be honest with you, too, being impartial, Tennessee has a really, really favorable schedule this year with the exception of not gaming Swamp and then playing Bama at home. Um, Kentucky could maybe be a trap game, but, you know, and obviously we still got to beat Texas A&M, which underperformed last year. But I feel like if they were going to make a run, this would be the run. If not, then it's going to be Nico time. But, uh, you know, thoughts on Tennessee? Uh, we kind of covered it. I like the twelve ranking for us as a fan. I'm I'm good with it. We'll see what Joe can do. And like you said, the offensive coordinator being able to mesh with Joe and just run the offense is going to be a big thing. One thing you know, I I think we'll see pretty early is how much are they letting Milton call plays. I feel like we let Hooker make some solid changes, and I think he did a really good job at that. And that's part of running this offense that we have. And um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Mil uh, Hooker was a lot of people crack jokes about the slants, and uh -huh. a lot of people crack jokes, and I, I don't understand that about his reads. M Hooker was incredibly underrated with, and I mean, obviously, we we watched a lot of Tennessee football last year. Hooker was incredibly underrated when it comes to his reads, check downs and audibles and stuff that he ran. And I really don't understand the slants thing because, I mean, I saw him throw the ball downfield all year with success, but, you know, that's new here or there. Yeah, but, well, it's good. I mean, we did throw some, but we do that to open up the deep ball. I mean, if he yeah. makes a quick read and we can get five yards, we're taking it every time. Yeah. I mean, you? 
yeah, why not? Especially when you got Hyatt who, you know, broke the freaking yeah. you know, I mean, record for speed. I mean, you know, why not? And then you got Tillman who's, you know, just a beast of a receiver as far as body frame and stuff wise. Um you know, if you can get him in a curl, I mean, he's just going to beat up cornerbacks anyways. But they act like we didn't throw the ball downfield. And, I mean, I've seen several stats. <laughs> uh, we were like one of the best ones, 40-plus. So, I, I really. These days, there are plenty of things to worry about. But keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. That's just yeah. coming from people that don't watch football. And again, that's us being impartial. It just is people it. that want to say that the offense is, you know, a scam or a fluke or a fake or whatever. But, you know, hey, I ain't worried about them. Hey, hey, listen, let them say what they want. Yeah, our offense is terrible. All we do is throw slants. We're going to throw slants and still beat you by 50. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Vols by 50, baby. I freaking love it. Um, Notre Dame. There's a lot of people talking about them last year like they were going to do something. Eh. I'm not saying that they're not. They could make a little bit of noise this year, but um, I just have a hard time believing it, man. I mean, they lost, um, and I'm just looking at this, the roster for this year, but they lost uh I'm not 100% sure how to say it. Pine, Peen, whatever their starting quarterback. 2,000 yards passing. Um, lost him. Um, they've got a new-ish coach. I think he's only been there for like a few years, a couple years, not real sure. Um, you know, I just, I don't, I mean, I think they'll, they might finish in the top 25, but honestly, they may disappoint some people, but Utah's got Cameron Rising back. I think that they might make a little bit of noise this year, but not enough to make it into the playoffs. Um, honestly, I I kind of question if they're going to beat Florida. I know it's at home, but I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on Utah or not. But I have the thoughts that uh, they have a beautiful campus. Have you ever been there? It's real nice. I've not. I mean, you. I've heard Utah's Utah will beautiful. finish in the top ten at the end of the year. I, I really do actually think that. Um, they I mean, just, I think they're they're oh, going to probably hit, they'll hit a pretty high New Year's Eve bowl probably. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to be in the yeah. playoffs. But they're they're going to be in the top ten. Yeah, I mean, Cameron Rising has a great head of hair. He's just not going to lead him in to the playoffs, yeah. like you said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bo Nix. I mean, who knows what's going to go on with that? Oregon. I'm play yeah. high school for the record. Oregon needs to focus on football and 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 not on uniform combinations. Yeah, it just is what it is. Yeah, there's a real school I, here that we we got the uniform combinations on lock now. As mm, Coach Wade let us know last week, we got that on lock. Oregon. Oh yeah, your second fiddle now, baby. Sorry. Um, I think Kansas State might slide up like they did last year. I think they may actually finish pretty high. Defense looks good. Um, TCU, I've got them losing first week to Coach Prom, just me personally. Yes. Uh, I've got 150 bucks on Coach Prom winning four. Uh, I need oh, okay. to win. Well, I was just saying that game, I was like, whoa. Nah, no, no. Or I'm sorry, I think it's 100 bucks on them winning four. But honestly, I've got them beating T. I do have like, I think, 10 bucks on them beating TCU first week. Um, but I think T- uh, Kansas State's going to. I think they'll slide up. TCU's going to fall out. Oregon State, I mean, you know, they're going to finish under Oregon. Wisconsin, eh. Oklahoma, eh. Now, Carolina, I mean. All right, I got this. 
I got this one. <laughs> Here's the deal. Here's the deal. South Carolina, week one. That right there is going to make make or break the season. It is a very, very, very easy year in the ACC for the Tar Heels. Let me. I'm going to go through the schedule real quick. South Carolina. I believe that's in Charlotte. That's like a kickoff game. They have App. They have Minnesota, Pitt, Syracuse, Slumping Miami, Virginia, Georgia Tech, Campbell, Duke, Clemson, and NC State. So Clemson, Pitt, that that's it. State, that's it on the schedule for games. So I mean, honestly, uh, that's if they're going to do something this year to try it. Honestly, that's that's a pretty respectable schedule in my book. I mean, if they can oh. if they can win win those out, I mean, have you seen Drake May? Listen, Drake he, May he is, can throw the ball as far as that gum Joe Milton. I ain't whoa, worried about it. Drake whoa, May, whoa, whoa. he's got some big old Tangelos down there. Don't get this this show flagged for misinformation. Okay, Joe Milton can throw <laughs> ninety seven yards. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flat foot. Um, yeah, I mean. I, I do like Drake May a lot. I also liked Max yeah. Duggan a lot. I think Max Duggan is really underrated, but that's that's neither here nor there. My biggest thing. What is about Mac Brown? Mac Brown, we got Mac Brown. We're good. Yeah, I mean, look, Max Duggan. My biggest thing with Max Duggan, dude, is just he. I feel like he really carried that team further than they sh- probably should have went. But uh, I do like Drake May. I do like him a lot, actually. Um. Not to mention, too, his name sounds like he could be a country singer, but that's not here or there. Mm-hmm. So, Carolina, where, I mean, you think they're going to finish top 25 or top 10? Uh, definite. Oof. Imagine if Drake May come along two I years later. If Drake May comes along two years later, they're probably in the playoffs. So, I just don't know what Pitt – so, Pitt is the one on the schedule that they always struggle with up there. I mean, Clemson, I, we play Clemson is uh, November 18th. Like, might, is it possible that Dabo is going to be like done lost five games by then? Cause I, I kind of think it is, honestly. It wouldn't surprise me. But um, it's gonna, I think it's going to kind of depend on their quarterback play. Like, we're going to figure out if they can win without, you, you know, without Fabio. I mean, I think Carolina can go 10 and 2 from looking at it. I feel like that's, I don't feel like that's unreasonable to say that looking at the schedule, in my opinion. It's just um, the biggest thing with Carolina. They got to figure out how to win those tough games, dude. I mean, they, they win there's, some. There's, there's, say what? There's say none what? on the schedule this year. We're fine. We're good. Well, I just, Miami mean, like, at home. His, we're good. Historically, they just, they'll lose yeah. ones that they should probably win and then they win some that they probably shouldn't. Yeah. But, Choke. What, what about official. Lane Train, Ole Miss? Oh, baby. So, I've been waiting to get to this one, too. That's what I've been excited for. You put him in the top five. Lane Train is going to be playoff possible. Playoff possible. possible. I think I took him to win the West, and I feel pretty solid about it, just to be honest. I really yeah, do. Yeah, you, uh, you had them 10-2 and two on the yeah. year, winning yeah. the West, going up against the undefeated Tennessee Vols. Yeah. In- or in the Can you SEC imagine that scene in Atlanta for the SEC championship? If there would be so Lane. many mullets, it would be ridiculous. Can you imagine that? I mean, you have, I, also had Arkansas ma- match them at ten and two, second in the West. I think, Texas A&M I think they just got me fired up last year talking about drinking beer. <laughs> you know, I will say. It's easy to get lost in the mystique of Ole Miss if you follow Kiffin on Twitter because he's very charismatic. I don't follow. I don't follow him. I just I, Twitter's I dead anyway. It don't matter. <laughs> the X was a metaphor oh, for God. their their death. Mm-hmm. They're not get, wrong. I mean, how don't... sad are you that Twitter's dead? Uh, just move on. <laughs> so Texas A and M, I think they're gonna have a bounce back year. Honestly. They may or may not be a sleeper. I mean, they've got a lot of five stars, a lot of guys that want to win. Jimbo, if he figures out how to play in the SEC, you know, he, they they really honestly could be one of those surprise teams. They're one of the ones that makes me slightly nervous as far as what they might do this year just because they were this close to beating Bama. Um, they 
they had a really bad year. Nobody's looking at them. They could come in and do what Tennessee did last year and upset a lot of people for no real reason whatsoever. Um, and not to I mention, too. I think that's too, a great for them. You said that's a what? I think being down there at the bottom is great for them. There, there's not a lot of pressure to show up and play football. And yeah, I think that's and, a place to power to play from. And not to mention, Jimbo's got a lot to prove, and that Johnny Manziel documentary is going to embarrass the the absolute crap out of them. They're going to want to come in and knock a few people off, and nobody's looking at them, so they actually could maybe be dangerous. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, um, now I'm going to sk- skip Tulane and come back to them. Iowa, I mean, they tried to rip off the Steelers' uniforms, and they're just not going to do anything. Um, now, coming back to Tulane, Tulane – they have a man by the name of J.J. McCleskey. Let me tell you about J.J. McCleskey. He played, he was, he grew up in Carnes, which is local to, you know, us Knoxvillians. Uh, grew up in Carnes, uh, went to Carnes High School, went on to play for the Tennessee Volunteers. Um, you know, for his, his size, was an incredible player. And, uh, yeah, now he's he's the defensive backs coach down there at Tulane. I'm going to tell you what, I think he's going to bring a little bit of magic into him. I think they're going to slide up a little bit. They're not going to make the playoffs, but I think Tulane is going to replicate some success. I think they're going to have a little J.J. McCleskey magic. And uh, I think that maybe they can finish in the top 25, which would be incredible for them. They're having a just absolute – awesome Cinderella run right now. And I think they keep it rolling and, uh, and build on some, some, some future stuff here. But, uh, I like, you know, I like a little bit of craziness. I think Tulane maybe finishes top 20 this year, but again, I think it's that JJ McCleskey magic. So I'm down. I like it. So, um, that's our breakdown of the top 25. Uh, we actually spent a little bit more time than we had designated on that, but do you have any, Who's your surprise team, and do you have any hard stances? My hard stance is Saban's not finished in the top ten. Ooh, I'll miss it. Dang it. Facebook's going to be coming after us on that one. Come um, at me. So possible Saban's sleepers gonna... were who? Lane train rolling. Texas A&M and Ole Miss are our possible sleepers. Saban is going to retire a sad, sad man. And uh, Tennessee Vols, according to Casper, are going to go undefeated. But we're going <laughs> to take a quick nine break. and three. I said nine and three. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at a graphic that says twelve and zero oh, by God. And let me tell you something. I I can't. Well, did we? We may or not have ever even posted that episode though. So I don't know. It, hey, I don't know if we did or not. Hey, listen, real quick, real quick, before we end and go to break. Look, guys, we got it on the screen right here. If you watch this on video, college. Pick them, get in it. Go to bigdrewski.com. Drew Ski, what is the information for everybody to get in? We need to get as many as pick as we can. I think, no, we're going to do weekly challenges. Gonna, we're going we're gonna to have a good time with this thing. I'm going to double check this real quick to make sure that I do actually have a link. Now, if you go to the uh, Little Tangerine Show Facebook page, I believe it is featured. If not, it's on the Big Drewski page. But I'm going to look at my website. Okay, so I don't currently have a link to it on the website. I'm going to put a link to it before this episode airs, but go to www.bigdrewski.com. Uh, we do, we're going to be playing college pickums. Me and Casper, we're going to be making picks every single week. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some prizes at the end of the year. Um, we're probably going to give away a pretty sizable gift card. But um, we're going to look at doing some weekly prizes and stuff. But d- just to be honest with you, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to keep track of it through the year. And we may or may not be embarrassed by our totals, but it's going to be a lot of fun, dude. Um, so make sure that you get in on the college pickums uh, games. I think we – I don't want to throw out a number because I don't know yet, but all are welcome except for o- Ohio State fans because nobody likes a whiner. Um <laughs> hey. Just kidding. Now, if you if you root for Ohio State, you all are welcome. It's going to be fun. That's something that we want to do this year. We're also our guests that we bring on. If we bring them on during the season, we're going to let them make some pickums for that week and stuff as well. But it's going to be a lot of fun, man. Make sure that you guys check it out. But we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back. Do not go anywhere, baby. We're Tangerine Show. He said I'm going to. 
these days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home, and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. Take this straight to the top. All right, welcome, welcome back to the Little Tangerine Show. Big Drewski here and uh, Big Casper here, the co-host. Uh, what's funny is I call myself Big Drewski, but he's like six seven. Um, I'm just fat. But uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome back. So uh, in the final segment, uh, we're going to cover some more Tennessee ball stuff. We're going to get into the fan question of the week. And, uh, yeah, it's just a way that we like to wrap up and, and say goodbye to our peeps. But, um, so Tennessee, um, which I mean, dude, we're hitting the recruiting trail hard, which is incredible to watch. I mean, we've already got Mike Matthews, which was like, I think the highest recruit that we've gotten, like probably 20 years or something, which is awesome to think about because Nico is going to be throwing to him. And Nico is like the highest recruit ever. I think that we've got or something crazy. I'm the $8 million man, but a lot, a lot, a lot of um, good things. Um, now, granted, that is going to kind of depend on how the season goes, but uh, a lot of good things popping. Um, Hypo for the second year in a row has incorporated gospel music at practice, which I think is kind of incredible. Um, I know Coach Wade talked about how he liked to start his, uh, he, he liked to start the road trip with some gospel music. Um, Pretty cool. Now we do have some preseason injuries. Um, we've, we we got a couple guys out. One guy's out for the season. One guy is out. Uh, I think for the majority of the season. Um, you know, so obviously some good. You know, some not so good news there. Um, but I think for the most part we're going to be okay. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of good things. A lot of a lot of exciting things happening. Um, Casper actually had a beam of light, uh, when he was driving around downtown Knoxville the other day. Yeah. So, you know, I, we've mentioned on the show before I, I get pretty close to the stadium for work from time to time, but, uh, I was down there the other day and, uh, the old V O L S letters were lit up at about five o'clock in the morning with the sun, just barely starting to come over the beautiful smoky mountains and whew, you could smell it, feel it. Your blood started pumping. It is getting close to football time in this state, and I am ready for it. So, uh, I mean, you know, fall. I think it was you. Didn't you send me some stat about how we've done better now that the letters have been back? That wasn't did I, imagine? I did see that somewhere. I think you sent it to me after somebody sent it to you, actually. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of people were talking about that, but I mean – <laughs> It's just the iconic nuance of Tennessee yeah. football. Some people like to ruin it for making, you know, adding that to their logos and stuff. But, yeah. you know, it's just the iconic, iconic thing, man. It's just so old school. There's something about it. I'm yeah. so glad that we brought it back. Uh, um, but as far as the injuries go, um, defensive lineman Tyree Weathersby is going to be out for the entire season. He is a freshman. So I don't know. Maybe we can throw a medical or a red shirt or something on him, maybe. Um, yeah. protect him a little bit. Um, the other uh injury that we have is freshman running back Deshaun Bishop, who is a former Karn standout local boy. Hate to see a local boy going back going down. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully he'll be um, you know, recover well and stuff, but he's gonna be out for about two months. Um, you know, so hopefully we can get those guys back. Now, thankfully, we are pretty deep at the running back position. Obviously, Jabari Small, uh, Jalen Wright. We got Dylan Sampson. And then we also got Camden Selden, who was an athlete coming out of high school. 
Um, he can actually play running back or wide receiver. We've got him listed at running back last roster update I've seen. Um, thankfully, we are deep at the running back position. We've got some depth at defensive line, but we need to probably keep the rest of our guys healthy. Um, Tyree Weathersby, he's pretty good athlete on the defensive line. Um, you know, and obviously we're starting to build depth through recruiting, but you know, we want to make sure we keep our guys healthy and everything. So, uh, but hopefully, you know, wish them a speedy recovery. Anytime anybody from our Vols family goes down, it's, you know, we feel like we lost one of our own. So hopefully those guys, um, recover well. And dude, at the beginning or at the end of the day, football aside, man, you know, you want to see, Obviously, you want to see these guys on the field. You don't want to see them hurt. But, you know, outside of football, I mean, just, you know, we want to see these guys bounce back and be um, the best versions of themselves. So, um, hopefully, everything goes good with that. But, um, yeah. So, um, other than that, balls are, you know, injury so far, knock on wood, not been too bad. Still looking pretty good for the season. Um, students are moving in. the The pride of the Southland band is putting out videos. Oh, they're, yeah, they're warming up, getting ready to go. Smokey's starting to stretch his legs a little bit. We hit that first little sexy, uh, you know, f- uh, fall oh, brisk little gosh, bit of air today. Morning. Oh, Ooh, dude! Man. As soon as I felt that light little breeze, I was like, "Oh, you're a football's right around the, the corner, yeah. baby!" I was uh, so same excited. Thing. Same thing, man. Peyton's <laughs> coming back to campus. Yes, is that insane? Just kidding. He wasn't there for that. Feels like '98. He wants to come back and set up shop because he wants to be here for the rebirth. Yeah. I freaking love it. What's Ooh. he? Te- but he's teaching something random like communication. communication. It's is not random. No, he does TV. It's not. Well, it's I mean, crazy. he's got he's got his degree in like psychology, though. Who cares? Yeah. He's got a degree in being Peyton Manning. He, Listen, he could come back and I was in school. He could come back and teach how to use like Mister Clean. I really don't care. Just having him back on campus is incredible. Yeah. Um, I'm I may just hang out down campus just so I could try to bump into him at some point. What do you think he's going to pack for his lunch? <sighs> you know, I figure. Uh, Probably bologna and cheese. He seems like a bologna and cheese kind of guy. You know, he really, yeah. I mean, he seems like a, a simple guy that's just like he doesn't have to impress anybody. You know, Maybe he doesn't have to. Like, he might just pack that and then like bring Joe to class with him and like watch film with him. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I definitely know he dang sure ain't putting mayo in his coffee. I do know that. No, um, no, because his but name yeah, is so. Awesome. Love us. Dude, Will Levis, that that still <laughs> I hadn't heard me. that name in a minute, but it makes you sick, doesn't it? I may, I may or may not be a Lions fan. I still haven't decided. Uh, I got to get that wrapped up pretty quick. But uh, you know, this upcoming week, man. Like I said, we're 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 right around two weeks from football. So excited! I know, me and you are going to get that the grill rocking a little bit more. We're going to have our, you know, our come over hang out you know have the women folks sit together and and talk about whatever else so we can yell at the tv it's gonna be awesome um so excited uh anything coming up this week exciting that that you had on your nose i'm I'm going on vacation so yes you are i did forget about that i'm hoping that the next time i do this podcast with you i do it from like beachfront we can have the waves in the background it's that be would be, time. and then I'm coming back, and then the weekend after I get back, it's football. Is it getting better than that? No, oh, dude, no, I'm so man. freaking, uh, I'm so freaking no excited, answer. dude. Um, so we are gonna get to our fan question of the week. Now, I will say I dropped the ball on this one. We were riding high on the uh, Jonathan Wade interview. Um, yeah, and there's I was so focused on wrapping up everybody's fan questions and stuff for that. We literally sat down and started going over notes and I realized I hadn't prepared something, but Casper says he's got something. Okay. Raquel is in Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. She wants to know. We've got a nice little pocket of Saudi Daisy fans. I know. Do the Florida Gators have the balls to go for a blackout game against Tennessee in the swamp night game week three. (sighs) 
So, I honestly don't think they have the cojones to do that. I'm also, I want to say in passing, um, I want to say that I seen that they're going to rock that out for Arkansas. Um, not they're saying. Sure. Not but 100% do they have sure. Balls to wear that against us. I don't think they do. I really I don't. don't on, they don't honestly, want none. Smoke. They don't want none. I think they don't want none. Now, to be fair, their uniforms looked pretty cool. I'll give them that. I, I liked our our blackout uniforms better, but I just I don't think they've got the cojones, man. I really don't. I mean, if we got any Florida fans on here, feel free to chime in in the comments, messages, whatever. Um, but I just don't – I don't think they got it, man. Yeah. Like like Coach Wade said, who? What? Who? Why? Huh? What? <laughs> There's a, a team of lizards down there? What? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, dude, I, that was freaking hilarious. Um, when he said that, I was literally like, wait, uh, what? Uh Florida Gators, like oh oh okay, they're not even on your radar. Okay, cool, moving on. But yeah, no, uh, we'll see what they got this year, man. As far as like, if they don't do good this year, I think Napier's out. But that's neither here nor there. But uh, if you have a question for us, you want to submit it to the show, go to www.bigdrewski.com. There is a contact tab. Um, obviously, if you want to send us money or free stuff, there, there's a place for that. But if not, just go on over to that section. It's lined out pretty nicely, easy to read. If you want to submit a question to be on the show, we're going to do that. Now, at some point, not me and Casper have been talking about this, but at some point we're going to try to see if we can work in some call-in, some call-in stuff. But that that may or may not be far off in the distance. But um, when you go to there, you have the option to subscribe Again, we're not going to spam up your email or nothing like that, but it just gives you the opportunity to where we'll send you some stuff if we're doing some giveaways or whatever, if there's something big going on. But click on the email, the show, um, the email, the show tab. Uh, Basically, you'll put your name, your comment or question, and then um, the city and state that you live in, just because we love to hear that. I mean, you know, you don't have to be super, super specific, but, you know, Um, and then, yeah. So if you have a question that you want to submit, go ahead and check that out. But I think we're going to wrap it up. We went a little bit longer than we meant to, but you know, wait, our wives never complain when we do that. So, I mean, you know, thoughts, closing, (laughs) closing comments, very important closing thought. If you've made it this far, please, please, please go to the little tangerine show on Facebook. Just follow like we need that. Ask your questions there too, man. Hey, ask questions. We'll get yeah, it in. That, that page is, I say brand new. I think I created it like a while back. I just literally did just nothing with it. it yeah, we are actually using it. At nothing against the people that's following me on the big Drewski page. Obviously, I'm still going to post stuff. But the Little Tangerine Show page, that's where the fun is going to be at. Also, information on giveaways potential interviews we got coming up maybe events down the road if we get discount codes on restaurants whatever it is um also like you know so we gave away a 25 dollar amazon gift card which jack saucman won um he also was kind enough he said you know what man i want to donate that back so we're actually going to um, roll that over into the next one. Maybe we give away two, but the last uh, gift card was Amazon. Maybe the next one's Texas Road. I, mean, I don't know. Like y'all give us feedback and we'll let you know. Fanatics.com maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. Like whatever you guys want. Uh, maybe we'll give away a hand and hooker jersey or I don't know. The possibilities are endless. But like Casper said, make sure you follow us on there 100%. Um, any other closing thoughts? That was a good one. That was a real good one. Drive the podcast, same thing. Other than that, no, I don't have anything. Thank y'all. Y'all been beautiful. I appreciate all your beautiful faces on this camera listening to us. And uh, thank you, Big Drewski, for letting me hang in here with you. And My uh, Xbox just randomly turned on for no reason whatsoever. Hey, it's out there. Look, it is I what think- it is. I think my uh, little tangerine show command center might be haunted. <laughs> but- yes. 
but you like guys are freaking guys awesome. Should have won. Yes, that's that's exactly what it was. But uh, you guys are awesome. You guys fuel us more than you know. We are eternally grateful. Um, it's incredible to see the numbers on the little tangerine show page. Like when you Amen. look at the followers and then we see the reach and all what you guys are doing. It's awesome. Um, the, the ones that follow us, man, you guys are literally the coolest people in the world. We're so grateful. And, um, with each and every comment and each and every follow, um, you simultaneously give us hope and make our wives mad because <laughs> <Amen. laughs> they they really want to shoot us down. But by God, it's really hard when you got a internet uh, a group of followers that's, that's pushing you forward. So um, I am big Drewski and I have my co-host Casper. And this is the little tangerine show. We're going to go ahead and head on out. Make sure you listen back to the episode with coach Wade and uh, make sure again, if you hadn't already that you click like, click subscribe and follow until next time, baby. Uh, Casper's going to be on, uh, on a beach somewhere, some beach somewhere <laughs> until next time. We are out. Peace. See ya. These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home, and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Well, well, shopping for a car? Yep, Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today.